Today on Drew, we wrap up our look back at season one. Our first kiss, and it was not on screen. I remember that. <laughs> it all starts Monday. The Drew Barrymore Show is on location from L.A. Hollywood's biggest stars and big hometown surprises. <gasps> oh, my God. We have to stop. Yeah. It all starts one, now. Two, Please welcome Drew Barrymore. Hi, everyone. I can't believe that season two of the Drew Barrymore Show starts this Monday, September 13th. And we're so excited that we decided to make it a two-week premiere event, celebrating hometowns and that feeling that there is no place like home. And next week, we're kicking off the season in my hometown of Los Angeles, and then we're headed back here to my new hometown of New York. But we want to celebrate your hometown as well. So write into the DrewBarrymoreShow.com and tell us why your hometown is special to you. Today, we're wrapping up a week-long celebration of our favorite moments from season one. And we have a very special surprise for an incredible Drew Gooder. Her name is Alicia White, and she was born and raised in Queens and after seeing the neglect of parks and outdoor spaces in her area, she created Project Petals, a nonprofit focused on revitalization and development of underserved communities. Alicia is backstage right now with her sister, Tiffany. And guess what? They think they're here to get a tour of the studio. They have no idea we're filming right now. And at the end of the show, we're gonna surprise them. Guess what? What with? Well, you're gonna have to find out. Right now, let's dive into more memorable moments from last season. First up is a guest I was honored to share scenes with. Oh, Hugh Grant, otherwise known as Hubert, is someone I just love so much. And he stopped in and we covered everything from our first conversation to our first kiss. And <laughs> it was not on screen, uh-huh, watch this. Let's start on um, how we first met. Um, do you remember? I... <laughs> you, we actually didn't meet in person. Um, I, uh, I reached out to you. Oh my God, you did. <laughs> you were so nice. You were so nice. Yes. It was during the dark days of my Divine Brown scandal. <laughs> I was just an idiot. I was... <laughs> I was a grown-up idiot who got caught by the police. And I was back in England with 5,000 members of the press uh, around the, the borders of my farm. And I opened a letter from you. Yes. That was very supportive and nice. Yeah. And uh, it was very cheering up. And I thought, I, I love Drew Barrymore. Words of support from uh, a, a, an actress I didn't know in Hollywood was lovely. So I've always, you'll always have a place in my heart. Oh, I loved you so much. That whole incident just, I related in my own life. And I think that whether it's an actor or a politician or anything in between, we expect people to be infallible, perfect, uh, never flawed. And God forbid we do anything in our personal lives um, that we would like to remain personal, but we don't have that privilege at a certain point because the cat gets let out of the bag. And I just uh, had to reach out to you. I just appreciated you. And I was so, I mean, and you were just the most charming human. I, I loved getting to know you on our movie, Music and Lyrics. And it's just one of my very favorite movies and it makes me so happy. It was a good movie. It was a happy movie. It was a I agree with you. I, Because I, I, I love to hate the films I've been in, and I do hate some of them. But I, music and lyrics, it's impossible to hate. We're so good in it and so charming. If you think I'm good in it, that means a lot to me because I have the deepest respect for you beyond your charm and, you know, your heart, your talent, I mean, is just unparalleled. And you've had a long body of work, so you shan't argue me out of that hypothesis. But, but it wasn't true. It, I think that film works. Maybe we, maybe we acted quite well. But the, here's the weird thing. 
we had chemistry. And there were people, I remember before we shot that film, it's a bit disgusting because he's 180 and she's like 20. But actually, it, we had a bit of chemistry. We really did. And it was funny, too, because when Hugh and I met, you know, Hugh, you can be a bit of a curmudgeon from time to time. Um, and, uh, and I, of course, am like a Labrador in heat and like, <laughs> I'm so excited with joy. And so when we both met, we were like, oh, we're kind of different people. Like, OK. That is, all, that is absolutely true. It was. And and maybe that's why it had a bit of crackle. And, and then we really got to know each other and accept each other for who we were, and it became easy. And then we just used to sit around and laugh. That being said, one of the moments that I had some of the most moxie, um, and I don't think we've ever talked about this, I walked into, uh, I think it was like the Waverly Inn, and <laughs> this was years ago, and I'd had a few drinks. <laughs> yes. And I walked in and I ran into you and instead of saying hello, I grabbed you by the collar and I fully started kissing you. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> can I do your can I do you of what I saw? Yes, right. yes, please. You went. I don't think that's true. But it, you were like, oh, that like the, the expression was you've never greeted me that way before. And then, and then you like had a second thought and you were like, you know, I'm not hating this. And then, um, and then we flirted and then it was like, we were like, okay, yeah, bye, see you soon. <laughs> it was really bizarre. I was very drunk as well. And I was with some very nice, but not drunk studio executives from LA. <laughs> they were very surprised. Someone said, oh, there's Drew Barrymore. I get up to say hi. And then we make out for 10 minutes. And then I sit down again and we go on talking about the script. Well, I guess we've grown up a bit. Do you think growing up is overrated, Hubert? Uh, yeah, I hate responsibility. I, I, don't, I don't want this. I'm looking after five children and an elderly father. And I don't like it. I, I, I keep looking around for someone more grown up to come and do it for me. It's and, awful. And yet, the last time we talked, the way that you talk about the way you look at life now, having five children's eyes to look through, look after, and look into, you seem, you know, like... Very I'm, 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 I'm simultaneously utterly exhausted and miserable, and um, clearly the happiest I've ever been. I, I, I see that now. It's so nice. All those cliches are true. All, all that love is just so nice. I think that... Not just the children, but the wife as well. I have a top wife. You, you, you must meet her. She's terrifying. Uh, Swedish. Much more manly than me in terms of <laughs> her habits. But um, really cool. And now you see, I'm, I'm happy. Oh, Hugh, I just... Oh, you're the best. More memories with Hubert when we return. Don't go anywhere. I want juice, dirt. I want to pull back the curtain on some of your most iconic roles. Renee was a, a genius at being British Bridget. But I do remember that she came in for the first read through and she sounded very, very posh. <laughs> Welcome back. All week long, we're bringing you some of our favorite standout moments from season one, with some director's cut commentary sprinkled in. And when Hugh Grant came on the show, he revealed some director's cut commentary of his own. We asked him to pull back the curtain on some of his most famous films in something we call behind the scenes. And he did not hold back. Take a look. I want to pull back the curtain on some of your most iconic roles in something we like to call behind the scenes. Um, okay, I want juice, dirt, fly on the wall, anything that comes to mind. 
when I mention these movies, if you will, please and thank you. Let's start with Notting Hill. There's so much. Um, oh, give it to me, Hubert. Remember the scene with the brownies? We were sitting around having dinner, and it's about who's going to eat the last brownie. Yes. All I remember, Hugh Bonneville, who Americans think is a classy actor, what he got up to during that scene, deliberately putting brownies on my chair so that I would sit on them in my white trousers. And then they could all, they could all laugh at my bum between takes. Oh, my uh, God. I, I remember that. Um, okay, four weddings and a funeral. Well, I, yeah, panic. I, I remember the director, he really... Because we had no money. We made that film for a, a, a minuscule amount of money and in 36 days, and he just lost it all the time. He would throw his cup of tea against the walls. Like, I can't <laughs> do it. I can't do it. I can't make this film. And, uh, <laughs> and we said, well, you have to. You've, you've got to shoot another whole scene here. It's two pages. And, and, and he'd say, oh, but there's five minutes left in the day. And so he'd say, stand against that wall. It was like, and we'd just stand there in a line <laughs> and we just see the lines with one camera on us, and that is there is a scene in the film like that. It took seven minutes to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so glad I asked. Okay, about a boy. About a boy. Uh, he's a big star now. That not that baby, but the the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Holt, by the way, and he's hot. Yes, yes, and we chose him for, because he was such a sort of nerd and a geek. <laughs> I know. He, I mean, yeah. with all due respect, he, he is, he's posed as a real outsider boy, and he grew up to be really hot. Yes, yes, he did. Okay, um, uh, Bridget Jones' diary. Well, there you have Renee, who was a, a genius uh, at being British Bridget. But I do remember that she went through some interesting phases on the way to getting that, that British accent during rehearsals. Um, she came in for the first read through and she sounded like Princess Margaret. Very, very posh and grand. And then uh, the next time she came in, someone had told her obviously maybe bring it down a bit. Uh, but then she sounded a bit like she'd had a stroke. <laughs> uh, and then she absolutely nailed it. I mean, it's one of the, it's an absolute triumph. And, and of course she did that accent, uh, not just in the performance, but between takes and she never reverted to American until the rap party when that was the first time I'd ever heard her speak with her Texan accent. And I quite honestly found it unconvincing. I love that detail. And I love hearing that intel of her process. Great, thank you so much. Okay, Mickey Blue Eyes. <laughs> oh, well, that's Jimmy Kahn. And uh, what can I tell you about? Well, I can tell you that my then girlfriend, Elizabeth Hurley, produced a film. And we had a lot of, let's call them specialists or advisors on the set who knew all about the, the New York mob. Let's just say that. And she was brilliant with them. If we needed anything done, she would flirt with one of these guys and she'd say, she'd go and sit on one of their knees and, and compare their manicures and say, oh, no, you've got such lovely jewelry and such lovely nails. And they'd do anything for us. You know, if we had a problem with planes going overhead, ruining the soundtrack, one of them would get on the phone and suddenly... JFK had redirected all the planes from that particular part of Manhattan. Oh, um, I, my God. I love that story. I'll never forget you and her stepping out and she was in that Versace safety pin dress. You know, there are, like, iconic moments in fashion, and that will always be one that evening you two stepped out. Uh, well, yeah, it ended up that way, but I, it, was, it was pure fluke. We were, uh, you know, unsuccessful actors. or not. We weren't that unsuccessful, but we were not well-known in any way. And suddenly this big premiere comes along for this film and she has nothing to wear. And I think I, I said, I think you can borrow stuff. I think that's what people do. They, you know, the big designers will lend you something. And so we rang around. We didn't have an assistant or a publicist or anything like that. We plucked up our courage, rang around, and they all said, no, who are you? And then Versace said, yes, we got something, but only one thing. And they sent it round and it was, this was the one dress that arrived. And she put it on. And I, I remember being slightly startled by it. it was, <laughs> oh, I bet you were. 
hot. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, and then the rest is history. It became a thing. Elizabeth Hurley's safety pin dress, yeah, that's always going to be iconic. All right, our season two pre-party is just getting started, and we will be right back with more season one memorable moments in a minute. Don't move. The internet moves so fast, I can barely keep up. Luckily, our team combs through it every day, bringing us jewels like this. Hi, Drew. I'm on the California Baby. I love skating. Watch me. That was a real gem. Thanks, Internet. Welcome back. We're checking out some of our favorite moments from season one to get geared up for our big season two premiere this Monday, September 13th. Next up is a segment where I got to eat dessert while chatting with adorable kids. It doesn't get much better than that. Joshua, Isaiah, Caleb, and Micah are better known as the Yummy Brothers. They're kid entrepreneurs who turn their family cookie recipes into a business. And we had a surprise for them, and it turned out they had one for us too. And anyway, watch this. How did you guys get into the cookie business? First, we went to go ask our mom if she approved of the business. <laughs> then she told us to go sit down with our dad. And our dad eventually agreed to do it. And we came up with the name and the logo, and it went off from there. Joshua, what has it been like working with your brothers and starting a business? Well, it's been really fun to be able to work with my brothers, my mom, and my dad. And another thing that I really love is that we're inspiring kids and adults across the world to be entrepreneurs. I mean, that's so wise. Micah, you guys are going to school and running a successful business. How are you managing it all? Well, how we're doing this is we do our schoolwork first and then we bake the cookies. <laughs> Caleb, what are you going to do with the money you're making? Well, actually, we created another business called Kidpreneur Expo, which is an online platform that allows kidpreneurs that advertise and market in their business. Uh, that's really smart. I learned early that marketing and advertising is very important because it's how you tell your story. And it's a great way for you to take control, but also make sure it's exactly the way you see it. Isaiah, you are all such cool dudes. What would you tell someone who thought baking was a girl thing? Well, Drew, that's an awesome question. Let's say, in my trip of imagination, you're on a Saturday morning having some coffee, probably just relaxing, and you have your cookies baking in the oven at 350 degrees, and when they get out, you take a bite and ooey gooey chocolate all over your mouth. Well, yeah. And another thing, Drew? Yeah. One of our biggest supporters was our grandfather. And he would always tell us, whatever you put your mind to, you can always do it. I am so excited to be talking to you guys. And I know that you sent us some of your yummy cookies. Okay, yum, 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 yum. What do we have? Walk me through it, gentlemen. All right. So we have... The Too Faced, which is double dark chocolate mixed with chocolate chip. Then we have chocolate chip, snickerdoodle. Then there's cookies and cream. Papa's white chocolate macadamia nut that was named after our grandfather because he loved macadamia nuts. And then oatmeal. Mmm. 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 that we picked out for you is to... Drew's E.T. cookie, which is means extra tasty. Oh, I love it! Oh, gosh, you gentlemen are so handsome. 
handsome and so talented. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh. In the Drew's cookie, there's pecans, toffee, and chocolate chip. I, I must tell you guys, um, these are truly some of the best cookies I've ever had in my life. And I'm not just saying that. These are perfect. Their texture is exactly what you dream of. And there are so many different flavors from all the different nuts. Uh, they're incredible. You guys have made an extraordinary product. And I know that one of your goals is to sell your cookies nationwide. And I actually... Um, heard that you would love to sell in a store. And I reached yeah. out um, to the or owners of Slim and Huskies, the first black owned pizza franchise in the country. We and love that place. We, we, we go there yeah. all the time. They're food free. Their successful pizza empire has stores nationwide. And I would love to welcome in the wonderful co owners of Slim and Huskies, Clint. EJ and Derek. What's up, fellas? Man, it's great. It's great to meet you guys. We wanted to hop on and say congratulations on all you guys' success. You guys are true leaders for your communities and your families. I just want to tell you to keep on going. The best is yet to come for you guys. Thank you. Man, we just want you guys to know if you focus, uh, continue doing what you love with the people that you love, man, you can't go wrong. So. Uh, much, much success to you guys. What we're going to do is allow you guys to sell your cookies in our Atlanta stores. How does that sound? Yeah, Let's go! Awesome. awesome, awesome. So what we'll do, we'll work together on a marketing strategy and we'll figure out how to make it all work. That sound good? Yeah, great. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We're going to, obviously, if we could be so lucky to have each and every one of you up on our website at thedrewbarrymoreshow.com, shining lights on your businesses. We love all of you and everything that you're doing in your business communities, as well as being really smart businessmen. Thank, Thank you so you. much. But, Drew, you know what would be good? If we did an exclusive Slim and Husky special cookie. <laughs> We like that. We love that. How impressive are those boys? The best. And since we last saw them, the Yummy Brothers marked a special milestone. They welcomed another brother into the family business. Baby Andrew is now the fifth Yummy Brother, and we hear he's been assigned to the very important task of taste testing the cookies. We wish them all the very best. Now we have to take a quick break, so I'm gonna go see if we have any leftover cookies in our kitchen, so we'll be right back with more season one memories and fun facts. Welcome back to our season two pre-party, and we're checking out some of our favorite season one moments, and I'm throwing in a little behind the scenes commentary stuff you wouldn't have seen before. I am truly obsessed with this next guest. All season long, I was vision boarding and trying to manifest that she would come on the show. And finally, my dream actually came true and her appearance truly sparked joy. This is our conversation with the declutter queen, Marie Kondo. Take a look. I have a question, Marie. When I first discovered Marie Kondo, I was basically a hoarder. I had 15 layers to everything. The chair had a pillow and a throw blanket. And I wonder when you do start to take away and go layer by layer and get to a more sane place, a less crazy place, something that feels more settled and calm. What do you do when life and kids and the natural layers of things come back in? With children, it's really easy to accumulate a lot of items and, and clutter, but 
in those instances, I work with the children to talk to them, hey, what sparks joy? What makes you happy? And I have them uh, play with them. And then you, you integrate them into the process. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, I wasn't doing that. So now I should go with my children and take them through their things and figure out what sparks joy for them. And then we can, you know, prioritize what we should keep and what we should let go of. Is that the right advice? Absolutely. Talk about this with your kids. And it's very important that at a young age, they understand what it means to spark joy and what sparks joy to them. You have a new online tidying course. Will you please tell us about that so we can all watch it and learn? Absolutely. So what this is, is a visual guide to the tidying process. And of course, if you read the book, some people can visualize it, but this really helps because it is a, a very visual medium to see the process, how it gets done, and help people go through the entire process of tidying up. Last week, I was mesmerized by how you fold underwear. The underwear you chose um, were uh, very petite, and I tend to wear something that f looks more like a parachute. <laughs> like, if there's a fire, we should all grab my underwear and, like, use it. Um, how would you fold, um, like, a fitted sheet or my underwear? <laughs> So, you want to take the most important bits and fold it to the top, like so, inward. And you could oh, fold it in half. Because this is cotton and it's a very rigid fabric, you don't have to fold it as many times. Okay. Perfect. I appreciate you so much. What you've put into the world, you've helped and allowed and normalized us asking what joy is and how we find it. I, I, I think I'm going to have to pinch myself. I just want to say, Marie, that I, I, I truly hope to make you proud. I. I, I have your picture on my desk, and I hope that I haven't scared you away. I am ecstatic right now. Let's go spread more joy around the world. Yes. <laughs> Marie, I love you. You have changed my life. I look at everything now just in a different way because of you. And we'll be right back with more memories from season one. Welcome back. We're watching some memorable season one moments and sharing behind the scene tidbits. Some stuff you didn't see on screen. It's a little season two pre-party. Of all the amazing guests we welcomed during season one, this big, tall, and handsome guy was one of my very favorites. I like to think we really are birds of a feather, and he even came dressed in the show's signature yellow color. It's the one, the only, my lifelong love, Big Bird. He joined us to celebrate World Kindness Day. Watch this. How is your morning so far? Always early, Bird? <laughs> <laughs> well, my day is going great here on Sesame Street. And, and you know the old saying, the early bird gets the bird seed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm tongue-tied because I'm so excited to meet you. I have loved... Well, I'm excited to meet you. It's a dream come true. And Aww. today is World Kindness Day. Do you mm. mind explaining what it's all about? 
Oh, sure. Well, I can tell you what kindness is about. You know, kindness is about, it's about showing people how much you care. And, and, and you can be kind to, to animals and, and the environment, too. And, and, and it makes my friends feel good when, when I'm kind to them. So, so that, that kind of makes me feel good, you know? Yes, it's true. I, mm. it's, um, it's funny, the nicer you are to people, strangely, the better you feel yourself. But how do you show kindness yeah. to your friends on Sesame Street? Well, whenever, whenever I'm sad, my best friend Snuffy, he, he calls me and he cheers me up. And that's really kind. And, and also Grover, he always holds the door when he sees someone leaving Hooper's store with a lot of groceries. So that's really kind. And, and, uh, and Abby Cadabby, she's kind to the earth by watering the plants in her garden. And, and that's really kind. And you know what, Drew? Even Oscar the Grouch can be kind. He takes really good care of his pet worm, Slimy. Well, in honor of World Kindness Day, we wanted to do a little sketch we're calling Kind Tweets. Get it? Tweet, tweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Drew? I'm really great at tweeting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I tweet all the time. Tweet, 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 tweet. I would See? love to follow you on Twitter. Well, we're going to read the kindest tweets that we found on the internet to spread a little happiness today. Big Bird, are yeah. you ready? Oh, sure. I'm ready, Drew. Okay. I'm going to go first. Um, at Dad of Five tweeted, hashtag hero, when nine-year-old Reese lost her home in California's biggest wildfire, she also lost her baseball cards, 100 of them. And she was heartbroken. And when Kevin Ashford, a lifelong collector, found out, he knew what he had to do. He gave her all 25,000 of his own cards. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love this. OK, Big, big Bird, tweet, tweet, you're next. OK, okay here we go. This, this one is from my friend Ernie. And it says, for World Kindness Day, my old buddy Bert gave me his favorite Argyle socks to make some new sock puppets. <laughs> Gee, Bert, that was really kind of you, it says. <laughs> He's right. OK, that was so kind. OK, one more tweet, tweet. At the Good News Network, tweet seven-year-old boy who was bullied opens a huge food pantry, making his life all about positive energy. I love this. Kavanaugh Bell told his mom he wanted to start a GoFundMe page to fulfill his mission of assembling and distributing care packages filled with food and toiletries for his elderly neighbors. And guess what? Kavanaugh is here now. Hello? Really? Yes. Hi. Hello, Kavanaugh. What an amazingly kind person you are. What motivates your kindness and positive attitude? Well, I know we're all going through some hard times right now, and I just want to make sure that people know th that people feel happy and that they're loved. So every day I think of how I can make this world a better place, whether it's by my care packs or speaking up and speaking out against bullying. I want to show the world that being positive is cool. Yeah. Oh, Kevin, I just, I love what you said there. It's so, so special. Uh, how, how does it feel to help out so many of your neighbors? It makes me feel so beautiful inside that I get to make, have people have what they need. And my goal is to help a thousand people in my community, but I've helped over 10,000 people, not in just my community, but all over the country. Wow. And Kavanaugh, how have the people responded to your amazing work? Well, they're usually kind of surprised. And sometimes they cry happy tears because no one has helped them like I have. But the most awesome part is I've been able to inspire kids up their community. Like Charlie, my friend, he's in New Jersey. He's helping his community. And Nicholas, my other friend, he is in Atlanta, or you could say Georgia, helping his community. 
We are all so impressed with you, Kavanaugh, and our friends at Sprouts and the Sprouts Healthy Communities Foundation heard about what you're doing and would like to help you continue to spread kindness by giving you $10,000 in healthy food. Thank you so much. Wait, look, Kavanaugh, here we go. And Sprouts Thank is you so much. such a wonderful market with such incredible produce and healthy food and beautiful quality um, companies that they sell. Oh, I just love them so much. And I was so thrilled that they stepped up to the plate in the way that they did, all inspired by you. Thank you, Kavanaugh. Thank you so much. I was truly starstruck by Big Bird. I mean, who wouldn't be? We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's time to surprise Alicia and her sister, Tiffany. Throughout the hour, they've been getting a tour of our building and are about to enter the studio. And we have to be quiet because they have no idea that we're filming. You. Oh, wow. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Here. Here. It's your show. I'm so <laughs> excited to meet both of you. Oh my, I, oh my gosh. I just love what you're doing in the world. By the way, I'm obsessed with your logo too. I'm a nut for graphics. Oh my gosh, love she it. made it herself. Y'all made it myself. Yeah. Yes, I made the logo myself. And we're obsessed with you, like everything flower. Yes. And the, your love for the environment everything. and everything. So. Our favorite movie yes. ever after. Yes, so we're yes. just so, so we are obsessed. Like obsessed. <laughs> well, and sisters is my entire universe now because I have two daughters. So it rules every move I make. And I loved reading about how, is it true you walked off a subway and like saw this space and something, a light went off? Yeah. Yes, I was traveling like with my sister, we were coming back home. And so there was like this environmental space in our neighborhood where weeds were up to everyone's waist. And there was like trash and people were using it as a dumping ground. And so I decided that I wanted to do something about it and improve that environmental space so that the community could use it for like, access to transportation, gardening, and so that started my organization. And I mean, I really wanna learn from you because I feel like, um, you know, sometimes we look at things that we would like to change, but you actually went ahead, figured it out, <laughs> changed it, and then continued the work on and on and on. So, I mean, I feel like we have a lot to learn from you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I mean, the only thing I could say is like, everything starts with one small step. Sometimes we don't think that one small action will have a ripple effect, but doing one small thing, like helping a neighbor or helping clean up environmental space can help improve communities and help improve our, commu our environment. So just one small thing at a time, I guess. So you did that and then you kept going and you've done more spaces, right? Mm -hmm. So I do spaces throughout New York City in every borough and I connect with other community leaders or people who are like, hey, I have an environment environmental project, I need help. So I give them tools, resources, help them with everything that I wish that I had help with starting out. And now that field that you walked out of that subway that day and had the light bulb go off, what is it like now? So now like it's a commuter path there. So like it connects all the neighborhoods with access to the train. So it's no longer a dirt path, it's no longer weeds to the hip and people could get to garden and go out and enjoy the space. Young people get to play there. So it's a beautiful space now. <laughs> I'm so impressed with you. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. are you guys close? You look uh, so much alike. I totally yes. get that you're yes. sisters. So we're yes. very close. We, we live, live together. together. Oh, so, yes. And so like, we're 
obsessed with you as well because like we bought our first home and we renovated the whole, whole thing, thing ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And we picked out paint, paint colors, colors furniture, everything. everything. Yeah. Yes. So we do like environmental spaces, but we also yes. like Yes, design. she's a one man show. Like I'm just like no, her she helps with paint, but for, like on project yeah. days I help out. Yeah. yeah so we <laughs> <laughs> not only do I help my daughters have the relationship that you guys have one day, but since you love being together, I'm hoping that you don't mind if I take you both to Los Angeles for our premiere show. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> yes. Oh yes! 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 We would love yes, to go. Would love to go. <laughs> Guess who our first oh guest God. is? It's Jennifer Aniston. Oh, what? I, I know, I freak out over her so what? hard. <laughs> I oh love her gosh. so much. Yes, we love friends. We love friends. Oh we gosh. love Jennifer Aniston. I love friends. I, I love all of her movies. I just love her. I'm so excited oh because she's gosh. someone like, I'm never not going to want to hang on every word. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have these suitcases for you, <laughs> um, you that our producer, Alex Clark, uh, thoughtfully chose in our oh, signature oh, yellow. We love you. We love yellow. You can <laughs> throw all your stuff in it. And we're flying you to LA, oh. and you're gonna be there in the audience in the premiere show as our special guest. Oh my, oh my goodness, thank you, <laughs> thank you so, so much. much. This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh I actually um, <laughs> want to take that kind tennis ball you just tossed over into our court and throw it right back onto yours. We think that you guys are amazing, <laughs> and this is going to be so much fun. Yay! All right, okay. LA, here we Yay. go. And then you oh can keep God. teaching me how to look at things that we want to shift and change and get on top of actually doing it and not just dreaming about it. Yeah, I think that's important. And I'm, I'm excited to teach you. I mean, I could learn so much <laughs> from you. So like that means so much to me. So yes, I'd be more than happy to. All right, sisters, yeah, my sisters. let's do this. Yes. Go sisters, I love girls and sisters. All right, Alicia and Tiffany, I'm gonna see you guys this Monday, September 13th for our season two premiere on the historic Paramount lot in wonderful Hollywood. We're gonna have a great weekend. See you soon. Thank you so much. Oh my God.